I'm sorry to hear of the passing on of Stephen Stocky, but I just came from a birthday party of an old dear friend of Ooh. mine and a friend of the salon. Paul Stauffer is 100 years old today. <laughs> and because of that, I would like to start off with us singing happy birthday to him so I can send him a video clip <laughs> next week sometime when I see him again. And then I may do something else, and maybe at the end we'll do a little coda of happy birthday. Who knows? <laughs> so why not just start off?
pleasure uh, to work with Sam McGill. Uh, Sam, as uh, Andre has just noted, uh, gave the premiere of my cello sonata a number of years ago. He's played it a number of times and he has recorded it. Uh, and uh, both Sam's uh, recording of the uh, Austrian uh, cello music with a remarkable solo sonata of Arthur Schnabel, who many of you might know as the great Beethoven pianist, but he's also a composer. Uh, and so uh, Sam's CD and my own CD of my three string sonatas are both available in the lobby if you want to hear more of what we do uh, at intermission. I would like to say also, uh, Andrea mentioned the passing of Stephen Stuckey. Uh, Stephen Stuckey was a fellow Texan. Uh, like I grew up there, so did he. And uh, hearing a performance, that uh, a concert that Stephen uh, curated uh, a year and a half ago to celebrate the centennial of the great Polish composer uh, Ludoslawski. Uh, he was a great authority of Ludoslawski's music and a great advocate for it. On this program, uh, he alternated his own music with the music of Ludoslawski. There was a solo cello piece by Ludoslawski and a solo cello piece by Stephen Stuckey. And I was so inspired by both their examples that I determined I would write such a piece myself. I don't pretend that my piece measures up to either of those two great masters, but I'm indebted to him because that's how this piece came about. So it's, a, it's an interesting coincidence at this point. Uh, at any rate, thank you very much. I enjoy Mr. McGill.
for coming out. Um, I'm glad that Andrea mentioned Stephen Stuckey. Um, he was uh, he actually gave me a few lessons uh, when I was an undergrad, and he insisted on not on me not paying for them. So he was just a very generous uh, generous guy, and incredibly humble for somebody so talented and successful. So um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm glad that his presence is, is felt here. That's that's really nice. Um, so I'm really thrilled to be joined by uh, some of my um, my friends from the Curtis community. I went to Curtis as a student uh, studying composition uh, about a decade ago, and um, these are some of my more recent uh, <laughs> Curtis, Curtis friends, and uh, really glad they could join me. Um, I study composition, so I have, to, I, have to, I have to really practice to keep up with these guys when it comes to performing. <laughs> I thought I would tell you just a tiny bit about the piece. Um, it was written for a 4th of July concert, and they wanted a um, patriotic piece. I'm a very proud American, but I was not too excited about the idea of writing a patriotic piece for piano quartet. Anyway, so uh, so I thought, well, okay, well, what if I do it in a way that you know I could kind of explain it to the audience and they could see that it was based on this, but then later, like people wouldn't really you know get it. <laughs> so that's what we have here. But I thought, I thought, okay, this is the salon audience. You guys are really like cool, cool audience. This is my favorite place to play. Um, I thought maybe I would explain just a little something. So it's kind of uh, the. Theme this is based on America the Beautiful. Um, you know, you all know the song. Um, became. So it get, became fragmented like that. And even the chords themselves. you to actually like catch all of that but <laughs> and then later uh, later there's the theme is kind of an inversion so if you think if you take out if you tie the notes in that theme instead of dun, 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 you get this dun, 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 which is kind of bar talk it's going to so I do this kind of three three two dun, 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 but I invert it so it becomes That's just America. <laughs> That's not anti-patriotic, right? <laughs> Proud American, like I said. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. There's also some fireworks in it because it's Fourth of July. <laughs>
Sure. 
I brought, as Andrea said, I brought some Czech music to you. I would love to play two dances by Petrik Smetana. He was um, a great patriot. So everything he wrote was either uh, based on a folk dance or on a folk song. So I chose two of them. The first one was based on a dance. It's called Furiant, which basically means a young guy who is a little bit full of himself. <laughs> full, full, maybe both. Um, <laughs> and um, it's a very difficult dance, so I would recommend not trying to dance to that. <laughs> and the second one, named Hulan, is based on a folk song in which a young girl who madly fell in love with a lancer, now we're in 1880s, as you can tell, um, She's singing about her love to him and how quick it was, and the only thing that remained from this love was this wonderful, lovely folk song. <laughs>
Dave pointed out to me earlier, we are a truly generational band. Henry is in his 20s, Dave's in his 40s, and I'm in my 60s.
Yeah. 